I, I guess it would be like less implementational, more exploratory. So like how, um, like, I guess, what is the rate of like ideas that actually do get implemented from R&D? Yeah, good question. I don't know the answer, but I would guess the majority, more than half. <laughs> I think more than half. I think like we're lean enough that Fair we're enough. not like sending our minions off to like do work that never gets looked at again. Like that that happens, but it's it's fairly rare. Um, yeah, definitely okay. more than half. That's definitely a fair number. Um, I just have two more tech-based questions and then we'll move on to like application-based questions for our, the members of the MS committee. So um, just like what kind of technology do you use um, for the problems that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? I know like you said that you um, like one day you'll do some like web work. So you'll work in PHP and another day um, you'll be working with machine learning models. So is it like mostly Python your typical like TensorFlow or PyTorch and then Apache Spark Hadoop, is it, is it that tech stack or is it like something different? Jeff, I feel like you're the most stack interesting person. Oh, you, you know, I have some funny opinions about this. Uh, if you're asking what you need to know, um, which I, I kind of get that might be a sense of Lita, um, it doesn't matter in the end. The two things that you need. You definitely need. You got to get a Python pandas. That that should just be like you do it in your sleep. Get reps in until you're so bored of it you feel like making a course. Um, and then the other thing you need is SQL. You need to be able to write multi. Like Ian, how long is a typical SQL query? It's not a ten. It's not ten lines. It's not twenty lines. You're talking 100, 200, 300 lines. You're talking about SQL queries that are generated by Python because they're too complicated to write. So Python and SQL, you should be a wizard as soon as possible because you'll increase your throughput dramatically. And then you have to settle on whatever stack you use. And by stack, that's gonna be a function of where you work. We are on Google Cloud Platform. So our stack, at least for me, I use BigQuery as much as possible. And BigQuery actually has lots and lots of non-SQL functionality. It has built-in machine learning, it has tons of stuff that you might have to use Spark or Hadoop for otherwise, if, if you are on another stack. Um, and you know, there are other power tools in, in Google Cloud Platform like Dataflow, which is almost like an auto scaling function application pipeline. Uh, so yeah, I would say like you have a set of core competencies that you need regardless, and then you have stack specific skills that you can build when you're in the company, but beware. I came from Snowflake slash AWS. When I got to Quizlet, I didn't know much about GCP. Nobody told me anything, right? I probably spent 30 hours, 50 hours, 100 hours on my own over the past year learning about the stack, learning how to get better at it, how to, how to build solutions. Nobody is going to come to save you. And I don't mean to say that in an ominous way, but be self-directed. You can figure it out. Documentation is your friend. So... Uh, uh, oh, there's a question. With Quizlet specifically, another thing that's just definitely like worth mentioning because it's so core to our stack is uh, Airflow. Is it Apache? Yeah, Apache Airflow. Um, which uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term like ETL, but that stands for like, it stands for extract, transform, and load. But really what it is is just like any sort of automated recurring job where you're like, fetching a bunch of raw data from somewhere, doing something to it, you know, you're like cleaning it or aggregating it or like inferring, maybe you're like doing some inference in some model and then you're like dumping the output somewhere else. And then maybe there's like another job within the same ETL that then takes that output and like does its thing and spits it out. And it's basically just like a sequence of jobs that are all just kind of queued up waiting for each other to finish. And one when one finishes, it'll trigger the next. And so we have like, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna say hundreds of jobs that run every night that do this kind of thing. So um, I'd say we're like getting we're sort of like trending away from this architecture because you you might say it's a little bit like 2015 vibes, but um, still like a ton of the the data work that happens uh, is like 
sort of designed by us in the day and then we like implement it in like into one of these Python like airflow jobs and then set it off to just run every night or every week or whatever. Um, so that's like a, it's a really big part of our stack for now. Okay, so basically be very, very comfortable in Python and SQL and basic, like basic, uh, like technologies and then everything else you learn on the job and you have to be very like self-directed. <laughs> sense okay so yeah. uh, we're gonna move on to like application and um, recruiting based questions so um, somebody asked uh, what a company like Quizlet be looking for and that got answered um, so basic probability um, so what else do you like to see in an application or in a resume like what stands out to you um, when you uh, when people like submit to Quizlet for the data science team Uh, lots of answers to this. I'll just chime in with one point, which I just cannot under, you can't underestimate the power of SQL. I know it sounds boring, but it's just like, SQL is like, it just is so core to like every, it just comes first, you know, like it comes first for everything we do. There's always some SQL first. And so we actually find that, um, or I found that like a ton of applicants, I, so I, by the way, I was like looking at, um, I was the, the hiring manager for the 